Hello and welcome to Bristol and today we're going to do a little tour of Bristol Quayside but with a difference uh, on the Visit Bristol website they've got really good audio tours so I've downloaded one hence these and this one's based on the novel Treasure Island by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson apparently a lot of the places mentioned in the book actually existed in Bristol there's some dispute whether he actually came to the city or not but places in the book are definitely inspired by places in the old quayside. When I was walking from Temple Meads to here, I found the old Quaker burial ground, and at the back, there's a little cave, a hermit's cave. The hermit's cave. Those pink cottages tucked away amongst the modern buildings are old almshouses. That one there, 1699, what they were were retirement homes for old sailors, many of whom had lost limbs at sea. Clue there, could that be the inspiration for Long John Silver? Could be. That pub behind me is one of the older pubs in Bristol and this area would have been awash with sailors, drunks, ladies of the night and if you had too much to drink in there and you came out and went down the alley suddenly wallop over the head, press gang, you would have woken up on a ship somewhere <laughs> halfway to the Americas. <laughs> I wonder if it's changed. I must show you this. Look at the angle on that doorway. Well, over there is the Bristol Old Vic. Quite an elegant theatre now, but in the days of Treasure Island, it was uh, a bit more rowdy. It was a place for drunken debauchery and all that goings on. Sounds okay with me though. That pub behind me, the Land Dogger Trow, as you can see, it looks pretty old, and it could be, some say, it's the insp inspiration for the, the pub in Treasure Island, the Admiral Benbow, and apparently one of the former landlords of this place was actually a Captain Hawkins. It's meant to be haunted by three ghosts, but all pubs claim that, don't they? <laughs> And also, there's a story that uh, Daniel Defoe met the real Robinson Crusoe here. And that, again, that could be pub marketing stuff, couldn't it? <laughs> but anyway, look at it. Pretty impressive. I just hope I don't bump into a blind pew and it gives me the black spot. <laughs> a pirate's death sentence. This area of Bristol is known as the Welsh Back, and in its day, it would have been lined with tall ships taking the goods around the world. And in the book Treasure Island, this is the area where Squire Trelawney comes to charter a ship, the Hispaniola, and Jim Hawkins meets Long John Silver. You can imagine it now. It's hard to actually, in today, with the sirens going in the cars but they've still got the cobbled streets and at night it's quite atmospheric. Anyway, the next stop now, we're going down to Queen Square. And now we're in the elegant Queen Square. It was named after Queen Anne. In the centre, there's a statue of uh, King William III. This was the centre of the business area of Bristol in the 18th century. You can't see it, but it's surrounded on three sides, just behind the grand buildings, by water, that side, that side, and behind me. And basically, the money was made by two things. One, 
being the slave trade and two being privateering basically going out on ships and it's robbing the Spanish and stuff like that <laughs> there's a customs house over there which I'll show you in a minute and also in 1792 at number 37 it was home to one of the first American consulates On this site was the original home of Woods Rogers. He was one of the most successful privateers of Bristol. And basically, he used to go out and rob the Spanish. But anyway, he discovered, or on one of his journeys, he came across a desert island uh, where they found Alexander Selkirk marooned. And that character became the inspiration for Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. Robert Louis Stevenson would have read all the accounts by these sailors and apparently Selkirk was not only the inspiration for Treasure Island, Robert Louis Stevenson used it for the character Ben Gunn. Oh, I forgot to mention, Woods Rogers ended his days as a governor of the Bahamas, so not too bad really. <laughs> That blue pub behind me, the hole in the wall, matches the description for Treasure Island of the Spyglass Inn. And it's, this is where they meet uh, Long John Silver and Captain Flint the Parrot. These little windows were used to keep an eye out for press gangs when the sailors were inside drinking. One of them used to be up there keeping an eye out in case the press gang were approaching and if they were, all the sailors would run out the back. Alongside the quayside, you'll find these red cliff caves and above are the, the fine Georgian houses. Many of the ship's captains used to live there. They could overlook the wharf and all the goings on. They're all locked up now. <laughs> Even if they weren't locked, I wouldn't fancy going in one. This network of caves and a red cliff parade. It takes up about three acres. And of course, the cave is the inspiration for Ben Gunn lived in a cave and like cheese on toast and there he is Ben Gunn meeting Jim Hawkins they do have tours of Redcliffe caves on certain days of the year it would be really interesting if you get a chance to uh, go on one that pub the Ostrich Inn dates from 1745 it's also on Redcliffe Wharf with all the caves and they've got their own cave inside the pub Apparently, it's decorated with a skeleton, but unfortunately, I can't go in today. They're closed. So that was our short excursion around the old Bristol Harbour site. The inspiration for parts of Treasure Island. It'd be quite good if you did this in the evening. It'd be more atmospheric, I would imagine. And all the pubs will be open too, so you can grab a drink. <laughs> There's more of these tours on the Visit Bristol website. Just download them to your phone. They're quite interesting. And also, they've got music and atmosphere playing, so it gets you in the mood, so pretty good. Another thumbs up from Fly Drive Explore. Mm -hmm.